Hey everybody, today on Mommy's Doll Corner, we're going somewhere over the rainbow. Are you ready? Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back to Mommy's Doll Corner. Thank you for coming back to see more of my doll collection. Today, we are going to go into one of my other fandoms and childhood loves, but still stay with Barbie because I'm ready for my Barbie week. So Wizard of Oz. Now I have to tell you, I'm a purist of sorts because really the only real Wizard of Oz to me is the movie with Judy Garland. <laughs> I own the soundtrack to that movie on vinyl. I know all of the dialogue to that movie. I've read books about the making of the movie. I've watched documentaries about the making of the movie. I love that movie. I've read the book. I read the first book, the Wicked book that goes with Wicked, the musical. I've seen Wicked. I like Wicked. But to me, The Wizard of Oz will always be the Judy Garland movie. So the first doll to come out in this series was of course Dorothy. And she is imagined here in a more glamorous fashion look than your standard Dorothy doll. And of course, different than the, any of the other Dorothy collectors versions uh, put out by Barbie. So there were 4,300 of this Barbie doll made and it was in celebration of the 75th anniversary of The Wizard of Oz. And once again, she was on the cover of the catalog. And it was another oh my heart moment when she was on the cover of the catalog. And I do believe that both uh, Chad Allen and J squared and I were just, the three of us were messaging each other and oh, my heart, oh my heart. And the problem is, is like you jump on these right away and then they immediately go on back order and it takes forever to get them. And I was very jealous because I think Chad got his first and I was just like, mm. but she's absolutely just, oh, oh she's even got the ruby slippers. But anyway, we're gonna look at her in a second. But let me just tell you what it says on the back of the box. Far from Kansas, behind the moon, and beyond the rain, Dorothy follows the yellow brick road to its very end. There, the citizens of the magnificent Emerald City wear elegant green suits and shimmering gowns. So while in the land of Oz, Dorothy visits the Wash and Brush Up Company to freshen up her appearance before the great and powerful Oz. I don't recall her looking this good after that visit. The beauty spa replaces her pigtails with loose, lustrous curls and a blue satin bow. Now the Wizard of Oz Dorothy doll presents a complete fashion makeover worthy of the Emerald City. And I so agree. The Wizard of Oz Dorothy celebrates the 75th anniversary of the beloved film dressed in a glamorous fantasy ensemble inspired by the costume in the classic 1939 movie. Oh, it came out in 39. Okay. The fantastic strapless gown features a bold reinterpretation of the signature blue and white gingham design, frothy tulle overskirt edged in satin ribbon and sparkly silver sequins. The famed ruby slippers are reimagined as striking red stilettos. The Wizard of Oz Dorothy doll is truly beautiful and worthy of a magical land over the rainbow. So she's absolutely amazing. And let's take a closer look at Dorothy. Here is our beautiful, gorgeous, glamorous Dorothy. One of the things that's really bugging me as I have had her now for a few years is that her blue is starting to kind of pull away from her box. And I just kind of don't like the way that looks, but I'll figure out a way to make it stop doing that. So as you get the long look here, you can just see that this gown is amazing. It, and absolutely, and once again, as I said, on the cover of the catalog, so of course, we all freaked out. So as we start up here at the top, you can see that she's obviously a glam Dorothy. This is not a little girl Dorothy. Her hair is auburn. It's a very, very dark auburn, so it's reading a little bit more brown, both on camera and even in person. You have to catch it in the right angles to see the red in it. I love this. I love this little tiny braid that they have going on here. That is such a nice touch. As you can see, there's all kind of tool and sparkles and things that were obviously not standard on the Kansas Dorothy down to the red nails, which I love. 
She's even got a beautiful sparkly clutch because every lady wearing a gown should have a sparkly clutch to go with it. Again, these dolls do come with stands. I just don't take them out of the box, so we don't put them on the stands. I don't know if you're catching the movement necessarily of the dress. Even if you go back up here and you look at the way this tool is wrapped around the bodice, there's a tornado of tool going on here. It was a very calculated design decision, which I love. And there we go. We have the famed ruby slippers, but this time they are slightly high heeled. They're not super high pumps, but they are definitely pumps. So again, let's just take a look down here to see if you can catch the movement of the dress and sort of the spiral and of the tool. And it just has that funnel cloud feeling to me. And she's, she's so beautiful. She's just so beautiful. I love her so much. So the second doll to come out in this series was Glinda, the Good Witch, who looks very, very different here than the original Glinda. And we can, you know, we could point out the hair, but she's got that whole glam makeover thing. I think of the three dolls, because we have Dorothy, we have Glinda, and we have the Wicked Witch because we need her in the story. This doll looks the most like a regular Barbie to me. Just my thought. Well, when we look at her up close, you can let me know what you think. Again, this is for the 75th anniversary. How astonishing for Dorothy to discover that we're not in Kansas anymore. We must be over the rainbow. But she was even more amazed to watch the shimmery bubble, oh my gosh, the bubble moment, grow and reveal Glinda the Good Witch. So she remembered what Glinda did. In celebration of the Wizard of Oz, this wonderful Glinda the Good Witch doll wears an extraordinary gown inspired by her costume in the classic. Layers and layers of pink, peach, and tan tulle form a frothy fantasy skirt. She does look the most like a Barbie doll that any Barbie collector's gold label doll has ever looked. Not that that's a bad thing. Not that Barbie can't be Glinda the Good Witch. It's just an observation. So let's take a close look at Glinda. So now here is Glinda. And as I said, to me, she looks more like a Barbie doll than any of the other collector dolls that I have. And that's mostly about her face, although it is a little bit about the execution on the dress. She sort of looks like a holiday Barbie or even a birthday Barbie with the coloring. So we'll go take a close up look, but that's sort of, she was a little bit disappointing to me have to be honest with you. So there's Glinda's crown, which was definitely sort of a clear crown in the movie. And she's got gorgeous, gorgeous red hair. Her face is very, very pretty, but it's very Barbie. I mean, I know they all look like Barbie, but for some reason this just looks so Barbie to me and I really can't explain what that feeling is that I'm having about the whole it's so Barbie thing. I just am, I'm sorry. So here starts the butterfly motif up here and then over there, and you can see some of the sequins on her dress, which are really, really pretty. She does not have painted nails. Nope, no, she does not. The blending of the different colors of tulle is really well done. I will say this is that beige color, and then there's a lighter pink, and then a darker coral color. So they're really, has been a lot put into this doll as far as the design, but somehow it isn't doing it for me. You see lots of sparkle down there at the bottom. Her wand is a very clear plastic stick. There's a little bit of glitter in it, but overall it's really a clear plastic stick with a thing on top of it. So that's why I've always been a little sort of eh, about Glinda, there isn't really much to sort of ooh and ah about, I feel. And you can let me know in the comments what you think. As you've seen some of the other gold label dolls I have, there was a lot to ooh and ah about. I'm not saying she's not beautiful. She is absolutely beautiful. I love you, Glinda. I love Glinda in the movie. I just, she's not really doing it for me. So the third and final doll of this series is the Wicked Witch of the West. She's absolutely amazing. She's just got the perfect green. She's so green. One of the things that I love about Barbie collector gold label dolls, like we saw with the Faraway Forest with um, the Evil Witch in that series, that they're not afraid of black. Sometimes you just need to go all black 
you know, to really bring the evil. So they've done that here and we'll see that when we take a closer look. Let's take a look at the back of her box. The moment Dorothy failed to surrender to the Wicked Witch of the West, her world became twisted with excitement and suspense, and so did ours. It was terror when I was a kid. The Wizard of Oz Wicked Witch of the West celebrates the 75th anniversary of the beloved film, dressed in an enchanted fantasy ensemble inspired by the costume in the classic 1939 movie. She never looked this good. Mm -mm. Her dramatic black outfit features a bodysuit worn under a high waist lace up skirt. Oh, I did not realize that. An attached black cape adds drama. Accessories include a sheer pointy hat and broom. Finally, the Wicked Witch of the West is transformed into a glamorous beauty painted with fabulous plum-hued makeup. The Wizard of Oz Wicked Witch of the West doll truly captures all her beautiful wickedness. Now what's interesting is there were 4,400 made of her. There were 4,400 made of Dorothy, but there were 5,900 made of Glinda. I wonder why they thought more people were going to want Glinda. Interesting. So let's take a closer look now at the Wicked Witch of the West. So here we have the gorgeous, amazing Wicked Witch of the West. We'll take a long look down her costume and then of course we'll go back up and we'll look more closely. Like I said, they don't shy away from black. The folks at the Barbie collector, no they do not. Sometimes it needs to be all black. So you can see the pointy hat and then this face is just Amazing. I am so in love with this face. Look at that makeup. She is green, green, green. And it looks darker when you're closer up on her, but as you pull back, you can see the depth of the green. They did not shy away from making her green at all. Here at her throat, she has a really nice touch that's sort of, it's just a little sparkly, goldish accent but it's just really nice. It sort of brings some light to her face. And then as we go down, now we see that there is this bodysuit, there's this sort of sexy mesh going on up here, and this really cool leather-like corset. And notice also that the gown is, oops, the gown is open here to the side. So this is actually, you know, I could see somebody, you know, like Cher or Cher, I'm giving my age away, or Jennifer Lopez or somebody kind of wearing this outfit on the red carpet a little bit. It's got that red carpet feel with this pleating over here, but this is, this part is leather. So there's leather and there's tulle and there's some fishnet. That's, uh, she's got a lot going on. She has a lot of stuff going on here. She is super glam. And of course, she's got her broom. Uh, her broom is very plain. I was wishing kind of the handle were a different color, but it is what it is. I, I just think there's so many cool things going on with this, this leather mermaid gown that they put her in with all of the fishnet. On her cape, you can see that there's movement, like she's flying on her broom. You know how her cape billows out behind her in the movie? And as a kid, that kind of creeped you out? Well, it works beautifully here, the way she's packaged in the box. So how did you like our trip over the rainbow? So I think it's obvious that Glinda is my least favorite. I think we can all agree. I'm going to do a poll because I want to know which ones are your favorite, and I'm wondering how many of you are going to put Glinda at the bottom. Now, mind you, if she, if she appeared in a bubble and she floated down and she was helping me get home, I would not turn her down. But I would say, you look like a quinceanera Barbie. So there's that. And then of course, my girls, <laughs> my girls. Um, it's very hard for me to choose a favorite between these two, but I will, <laughs> so it's obviously not that hard. It's it's Dorothy. So first of all, I think the reason that it's Dorothy is because she was my, I believe she was my very first, no, that's a lie. It, it's Dorothy because of the dress. The dress, the, the reinterpretation of gingham and the whole swirling vortex tornado motion that, you know, when I, when I got her, I mean, I saw her in the, in the catalog, obviously, but then when I got her and I took her out of the box and I sort of, I looked and I, you know, then I set her back and I, and I was like, her 
dress. There is a spiral feeling to her dress and, and it just, it kind of blew me away that there was that much detail in it. And I love the Wicked Witch of the West. I mean, you know, I especially, especially after seeing Wicked and having read Wicked, you know, I, 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 I get her. But that was not who she was in this movie. She was just a mean old lady in this movie who, who wanted to kill Dorothy's dog. So if you go, you know, so yeah. Um, but this outfit is like, oh my gosh, like I would never, I might wear Dorothy's dress I, I, under what circumstances, I don't know. I don't know if I would ever be brave enough to wear this outfit, but someone needs to like dress up like this. This is pretty cool. So thank you so much for watching Mommy's Doll Corner and taking this trip over the rainbow. Make sure you subscribe over here, watch another video over here. Please use the poll card to tell me which one was your favorite. And I can't wait to see you again as we continue looking at a party collection. Love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.